What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfil, sometimes known as the Bearded Dwarven Princess, and today we're back again with some more War of the Rohirrim news, as Deadline.com is reporting today that Lord of the Rings, the War of the Rohirrim has now actually established some of the voice casts that are going to be working on this film, including Brian Cox, Sky Wise, Miranda Otto, and some others. Now, I've previously talked about this project in the past uh, because this is one of the few Lord of the Rings projects I'm actually looking forward to, unlike Rings of Power that I'm a little hesitant about. Um, there is a pedigree behind this project that I just can't ignore, given the people who are working on it. If you haven't watched my previous video, you should do so. Uh, it's here. I should probably link it somewhere up above. It'll probably be up in here when I, where I've linked it. I have to remember to do that. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. If I don't, you'll have to go searching. Anyway, but there's also, um, if you go to the wiki page, um, who, who are the pedigree behind this? Well, um, we've got, if I remember correctly, oh, looks like they've already updated the wiki with the voice cast. Um, Philip Boyens, who co-wrote the Lord of the Rings film trilogy, is a consultant on this project, and if I'm not mistaken, her daughter is the one who is doing the writing, other, etc. Yeah, her daughter, Phoebe Gittens, is writing the script as of February 2022, along with a writing partner, Artie Papagiorgio. Richard Taylor, who's the creative director of special effects company Weta Workshop, is also involved. And illustrator John Howe, along with Alan Lee, are on the film's creative team. And they all, three of those guys, worked on the live-action trilogy together as well. Um, the last time I had reported on this, they had been in the middle of doing the voice casting, but they hadn't actually um, confirmed anything. Because I did my video back around February, and it said, uh, announcements are expected soon after February. Well, we're in June and we're just now getting the announcements today. Uh, so if we go back over to the Deadline article, it says the movie centers around the fate of the House of Helm Hammerhand, which we've already covered in the past, the mighty King of Rohan, who is a character from the book's appendices. This looks like succession actor Cox will provide the voice of that protagonist, so he's going to be playing Helm Hammerhand. Um, the anime features directed by Kinji Kamiyama, and it's set 103 years before the events chronicled in the Peter Jackson films. It says, a sudden attack by Wolf, a clever and ruthless Dunlending Lord, seeking vengeance for the death of his father, forces Helm and his people to make a daring last stand in the ancient stronghold of the Hornburg, a mighty fortress that will later become known as Helm's Deep. And, finding herself in an increasingly desperate, desperate situation, Hera, the daughter of Helm, must summon the will to lead the resistance against the deadly enemy, enemy intent on the total destruction. Looks like Wise from Walk in the Woods will play Hammerhand's daughter Hera, Luke Pascalino, uh, who's done a lot of projects above and beyond Snowpiercer. That's what they just mentioned here. He's playing Wolf. Um, he was also, I love him from, if you haven't ever watched the show, The uh, the Musketeers, he played, um, not Athos, Porthos, Aramis, who's the other guy? The fourth one. The fourth Musketeer whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, in any case, um, What's interesting here is Miranda Otto is returning as the character of Eowyn that she played in the Lord of the Rings films, and she's going to be the narrator for these movies. So I know a lot of people have pounced on that announcement and said, oh, look, she's returning back. She's coming back. She's, oh, yes, she is, but she's not actually in a feature role. She's not a main role. She is just the narrator. But it's it's sort of as a, to a token nod to the original trilogy to have her coming back and playing the same character that she did before because she knocked it out of the park as Eowyn. Mm. Mm. Her performance was just... I still, to this day, like, there are some scenes in in those films. It's, it's just uh, coming back to me, like, when she pulls her sword out and shows Aragorn, you know, that I'm, I'm not just some pretty face. I know how to use a blade. And then I always laugh when she brings in the bowl of soup, you know, and, he, and he's like mm, trying to eat it to be polite, you know. Um, but also just the way she portrayed the soulful yet powerful, you know, daughter of Rohan, basically, um, and fighting for her place, you know, going, I'm, I shouldn't be relegated just being in the background. I can wield a sword. I can do that. And most importantly is we're getting a, 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 another character here, Helm Hammerhand's daughter, Hera, who looks like she's going to be playing a very strong female lead in this as well. And no, I don't want to hear people talking about how this is the woke version of Lord of the Rings. This character has existed for a long time as a strong female protagonist, so it's not something that's just invented. It's very much a part of the lore and mythology here. Um, we've also got an, a, a continued cast that says the voice ensemble also includes Lorraine Ashbourne from Netflix's Bridgerton. 
Yazdan Kafori from I Came By, Benjamin Wainwright from BBC's One's World on Fire, Lawrence Ubong, Williams from Gateway, Sean Dooley from The Witcher, Michael Wildman from Fast and Furious Presents Hob and Shaw, Jude Akuwidiki from Beasts of Animation, Bilal Hasta from BBC Sparks, and Janine Davitsi from ITV's Benidorm. So we're not getting a ton of big, 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 big names here, but we are getting a cast of solid working actors who know what they're doing, who have done a lot of good projects in the past before. I would say out of all these, Miranda Otto is probably the most well-known after Brian Cox. Gaia Wise, I need to look her up real quick because I'm not exactly sure um, if I saw her face. I might know who she is. I do not know who she is. Um... So can't say that I don't know who she is just by looking at her. Um, Brian Cox, though, I've known for years. He's, he's had some great roles over the years. I loved him in, um, what is that Liam Neeson movie where he's the, the it's an older movie. Um, I got to go look here real quick. What is it called? Brian Cox and Liam Neeson film. It's an old film. Uh, Rob Roy. Rob Roy. Um <laughs> Brian Cox's character in Rob Roy is 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 pretty awesome. Um, in any case, uh, it, this this movie's still not out for quite some time. I don't think it's getting released until 2024, right? Yeah. Uh, da, 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 released on April 12th, 2024. So we're still two years out from this actually coming to the big screen um, for us. But hey, at the very least, we now have a confirmed main cast of voice actors and i guess we're going to see from here if they decide to flesh it out a little bit more or not and um, for those who don't know anything else about this project there is some great art great information in this article which i'll link down below i'll also have a link to my other video um this is being executive produced by philip aboyans who um won an oscar from the screenwriting on the lord of the rings and the hobbit trilogies it's also produced by joseph chow who's behind the blade runner black lotus tv series and the writing team includes phoebe gittens and Artie pipagiorgio um but from a script by jeffrey edis and will matthews which in a turn is based on the appendices section of the lord of the rings the return of the king by J.R. tolkien and as i mentioned we've got alan lee Richard Taylor and John Howe coming back. All those guys are in creative positions helping guide the visual look of the film. So I'd say if you liked the visual, uh, the visuals from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films, then you should be excited about what you're going to see. Now, obviously, this is an anime company behind this. So I would expect to see... I, actually, I don't know what to expect to see because if you've, if you've watched the other productions that the anime team has put together, it's very much the Eastern style of anime. Um, but they have done some really good projects if you haven't watched any of the other things that these guys have produced. So I'm very interested to see what they're going to be pulling off of this, if they're going to go for a different art style or if they're going to be blending um, Peter Jackson's stuff with what they've done in the past. Either way, I think we're in for a really cool ride here for War of the Rohirrim. Like I said, this is one of the projects that I'm looking forward to uh, in the Lord of the Rings series. So hopefully you like that as well. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll see everybody in the next episode. Until then, happy viewing. Stay safe, everybody.